Hey guys, Donna here, Hazel Bell Farm. Welcome back to our channel. Um, I have a little bit of milk chores that I need to handle today. Um, what well, kind of one of those things that doesn't happen every day, uh, but happens on the regular. And I thought while I did that, I would bring you guys along and answer some frequently asked questions that I get from you guys and through social media. So to start with, um, I have to clear my space here in my milk room. And that is my milk machine and everything that I use twice a day to milk cows. This is where it dries after I wash and sanitize. So I'm just gonna clear all of this stuff out. So the first question I get is, do you hand milk or machine milk? We machine milk. Now I use a refurbished surge machine. I will link a video at the end of how we use it to milk cows. Um, I've gotten a little bit spoiled. I hand milked for many years, um, but once I started milking more than one cow at a time, and we had a cow that had very short teats, as we do now, um, the machine really, really saved me. Um, and now, like I said, I'm spoiled, and I haven't been hand milking at all, but that's about to change. So that surge milk machine that I showed you, that was just the main, the tank part of it. Um, we bought it used, refurbished off of eBay. Um, there is a man who sells them. He runs a business, I can't remember what it's called, but he sells them through eBay. He's in Wisconsin and he has, he regularly has surge machines. I don't have anything to compare it to, but I can tell you this, it was super easy to use. Um, I had one, one little problem that honestly was user error, but I was able to call the man I bought it from. Um, he helped me troubleshoot what was wrong and didn't make me feel like an idiot. <laughs> super, super helpful. Excellent customer service. He actually called me before he shipped it to ask about some specifications with my particular cows and, um, you know, like teat size. So he knew like what size inflation cups to send me and did I, pref which tank size did I prefer and what the different charges would be for that. So he was super, super great, super, super helpful. I haven't had any trouble since I bought it and we are coming up on two years using that surge machine. Um, the only complaint, if I had one to say about the surge machine would be that, um, it's designed to hang by a belt around the belly of the cow over the, the belt goes over the back of the cow and then it hangs under the belly and the inflations go from the teeth. There's a short hose that goes right there to the machine and it doesn't come with that. I could get that and run the machine how it's designed to be used. I just haven't because it's been working just fine. Um, so what I have to do, and you'll see in the video that I link later, I have to prop up those hoses from the inflations to the tank. And it's not really that big of a deal. Um, it just, it runs much more efficiently that way. Next question I get is, do you have a cream separator? No. <laughs> Here's why. Um, number one, they're expensive. So I'm going to pull the cream off of all of this milk today. These are half gallon jars. I don't normally do this much at one time, always. Sometimes I do. Uh, I just happen to have some extra milk this week um, in our sales. We had a, a little bit of a glitch, but um, it's fine because I can use the cream in butter and I can use extra milk in making cheese for our family and, and I can sell that as well. So it's not really a big deal, um, but this is my favorite way to pull cream off of milk. I use a one third measure cup. It fits nicely inside of the jars that we use, which is just a wide mouth mason jar and a spoon. That's it. So I'm taking the oldest milk in my fridge. I've marked a jar, cream, because I'm not gonna make anything with it today. I won't do anything with it until tomorrow. And um, you can see that in a non-homogenized raw milk, you get a cream line. This isn't the best cream line we've ever seen, um, but it's it's more than sufficient. Some of these are a little bit more, just depends on the cow and their mood. You can see this one, it's a little, little bit more. So I'm just gonna sit here and scoop cream 
and drop it into this other jar. Nice thick cream. I'm trying to get as little milk as possible. Um, what you can see a different coloration that a grayer color is the milk in there but that's okay a little bit is okay so I'm pulling off the cream that's the thick yellow part and pouring it into my cream jar I don't like extra gadgets in my kitchen although we're not in my kitchen I probably would I, pro I don't know if I'd use it in here I'd probably use it in my kitchen um, I don't like to have to store them. I don't like stuff out on the counter. I don't like extra stuff. Um, so I really like the basic measuring cup and spoon. It just works for me. I'm pulling cream off here. Um, another reason is that Separator, you have to bring your milk up to room temperature to be able to use it. Otherwise, your milk will just turn to butter if it's cold. It's my understanding. I don't have experience with it <laughs> because I like this. So another question that I get pretty frequently is what, uh, what kind of cows are you milking? and what kind of milk are we getting if we purchase? Legit questions. So when people come, when visitors come to our farm, they will see all of our cows. Um, usually they congregate at the front. Um, the milk cows are at the, at the front for sure. And I thought that was going to splash me. We're currently milking a Jersey cow and a Holstein cow. So Jerseys are known for their butter fat content. A lot of homesteads are using them um, for their butter fat so that they can make amazing cheese and butter and ice cream. And that is the appeal for the Jersey cow. They're also... Um, <laughs> the production will range based on breed genetics and, and you know what their particular lines are um, feed all kinds of things but they're not as high producing as say a Holstein now the Holstein cow is your classic iconic black and white what we know to be a dairy cow here in America um, they give a lot more volume and that's what most dairies are running because um, the bottom line, the, the, the dollars are what talks to them and the bottom line is what they're looking for. Now we didn't seek out Dolly. We weren't looking to keep a Holstein. She kind of fell in our laps. Um, you can look back through our videos about when she came to us last year and she's turned out to be a perfect cow for our farm. Now she doesn't have the butter fat content that our Jersey girls do, but she has a lot more than I expected for a Holstein cow especially after we wean her calf. Last year when we weaned her calf, um, she, she gave a lot, of, a lot of cream, but the butter fat wasn't as much in that cream. So what I mean by that is if I took a quart of Dolly's cream and a quart of a Jersey cow's cream, I would get more butter made out of the same quart of cream from the Jersey than I did the Holstein. Um, and that's just, like I said, that's just gen genetics um, and, and how the breeds work. Here is a half gallon of cream. You can already see the milk is starting to separate at the bottom. I'll probably have like a quarter inch of milk on the bottom with what I got in here and that's okay. I'm, it's no big deal. It'll rinse out when I make butter. I bet you are wondering what I'm doing with the milk after I skim it. You see me turn around and pour it away. I'm pouring it into this bucket skimmed milk. We don't do anything with that skim milk usually. I used to. Um, I used to make like a part skim mozzarella 
but we like a regular full fat mozzarella a lot better. So we just don't even bother with it anymore. Um, we don't just dump it out though. It goes to pigs and chickens. We don't have any pigs right now though. Um, so it's just gonna go to chickens. I've heard so many people on chicken groups, pages, Facebook pages and that say that you can't give chickens dairy. I've had people tell me you can't give chickens dairy. Well, I'm here to tell you my chickens love dairy. Um, I don't know if the fact that it's raw makes any difference. I give them yogurt. I give them bad batches of cheese. I give them skimmed milk. I soak their feed in whey. Sometimes I just pour the skim milk right into bowls in their coop and they love it. I haven't had any trouble. I've heard it will give them the runs. I haven't seen that. I've heard they won't lay eggs. I certainly haven't seen that. Um, chickens are pretty strong, resilient animals. I mean, bird, they're birds. Birds are strong. There's a reason that old saying is she's a strong old bird exists. I don't know if that's why or not, but it makes sense to me. <laughs> so the next question that I get asked a lot when people are interested in buying milk from us and when they come to pick up from the farm is, well, if you have these two different cows, whose milk am I getting? Well, the answer to that is both, usually. In the mornings, I milk Dolly first. My tank holds five gallons, I think. Um, on the milk machine. So I bring the tank in while she's still eating after I milk her and I pour it into a seven and a half gallon stock pot and then I go back out with the same machine and milk Willow, my Jersey girl, and she gives about two gallons in per milking, so in her morning milking, and bring that in and pour it in the stock pot as well. So I'm using a stock pot as my bulk tank. <laughs> so in the mornings, it's both milks mixed together. Now in the evenings, I'm only milking Willow. I don't milk Dolly in the evening. I'd let her calf have, have her all day long. So he gets all of the daytime milk and then I separate them again in the evening so that I can get milk in the morning that she has produced overnight. So my nighttime milk has a little bit more cream on it because it's just the Jersey Girl. So you might be getting those jars. You'll never know. Okay, so you can see all my jars that I just emptied are washed. Sterilized, we stir, I use this steramine to sterilize them. It's the same stuff that restaurants use, food grade sanitizer. Um, so the jars and lids all get sanitized. Last question for now, and I'm just gonna give you the short answer of it and I'll expound upon it on another video, I think. Um, Cause it's getting hot in here. <laughs> I turned, I have a, an air conditioner unit in here in my milk room and I turned it off for the video and now I'm hot. So um, I, often am asked, why is your milk sold only for calves, not for human consumption? So this is what my label, let's see, this is what my label looks like. You can see it says not for human consumption, feed for calves. Um, because it's sold and why, you know, why is it sold as pet feed? Well, the short answer is due to red tape and bureaucracy. In the state of Florida, it's basically illegal to sell raw milk at all unless it is for feed purposes it's in, and it's sold for feed as pet feed. It's also illegal to sell materials as pet feed unless you hold a master feed license. The fine for that is a $5,000 penalty plus possible jail time. I always joke, I can't afford the fine and I'm not built for jail, <laughs> so we got the feed license. We have to report how much we've set, we have sold quarterly um, to the state, and that's just a hoop that I'm willing to jump through in order to be able to sell raw milk to the general public. So 
I can't tell you what you can and can't do with it. I can tell you I raised my family on raw milk. We purchased raw milk before we milked cows ourselves and um, we've never been sick from it. We have been sick from other things elsewhere, from restaurant fast food, um, you know, food poisoning. And we had uh, a food poisoning issue from bagged salad from the grocery store, um, but we've never been sick from our raw milk. So do with that what you will. That's going to be it for today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you'll share with a friend. Until next time, bye.